Ladies and gentlemen, I now have the great pleasure of welcoming Ahmed Davatoglu, the Prime Minister of Turkey. Mr. Prime Minister, you are an also a politician, a statesman, and you led uh, Turkey's foreign policy for five years. And five months ago, you have become your country's prime minister. When we let, met last September in Istanbul, we spoke in depth on your reforms and uh, a host of global challenges from job creation to geopolitical and humanitarian crisis, and of course, also at, re at that time already on the international cooperation in fighting terrorism. In all those issues, your country plays a very important and crucial role if we want to find sustainable solutions. It is for this reason, Mr. Prime Minister, that your presence here is particularly important. But you join us not only in your capacity as Prime Minister of Turkey, but you join us also as the chair of the G20 in 2015. A year in which, as you have stated, the G20 will focus its efforts in ensuring inclusive and robust growth through collective action. Mr. Prime Minister, we are all keen to hear your vision, your objectives for the G20 presidency, your maybe, if time allows, also to talk about your leadership in the reform process of your country. And your statement will be followed by a discussion with my friend, uh, Professor Victor Halberstadt from Leiden University. So again, a very cordial welcome to you, Mr. Prime Minister. Mr. Chairman, my dear friend, Mr. Schwab, distinguished participants, it's a great pleasure for me to address such an esteemed, distinguished audience. World Economic Forum is always the right platform to discuss world economic issues. And this year, I am participating in this uh, platform, not only as Prime Minister of Turkey, but also as the presidency of G20. In fact, in the last 25 years after the end of the Cold War, we had several shocks. Geopolitical shift in 1991 after the collapse of the Soviet Union, a security trauma or a new security paradigm after 9-11, a global crisis in 2008, economic, global economic crisis, and Arab Spring or political crisis in Mediterranean and in Middle East and North Africa. All these crises, despite of the characters are different, they are integrated and they are affecting all of us in daily politics, in daily economy, and in daily life, everywhere. So none of these issues can be excluded from the other one, and no country or group of country can be isolated from all these processes. Now, maybe in the history of humanity, we need a new sense of common destiny to shape our future in economic, political, cultural sense. A new world order based on inclusiveness is needed. In that sense, in the last 25 years, one of the most successful platform or organization as inclusive from the perspective of inclusiveness and effectiveness is G20. G20 did emerge as a crisis management mechanism regarding financial sector. But in a very healthy transformation and transition, now G20 is not only a crisis management mechanism for financial sector, but also a very efficient policy formation 
and policy consultation platform among the leading powers. 2008 economic crisis taught us something. Some, a crisis starts a as a financial crisis, being transformed into an economic, widespread economic crisis. Then through an um, unemployment, we faced a social crisis. And in many countries, we, had, we faced also political crisis, instabilities, rise of marginal groups in political life. So a financial crisis end up with a much more bigger crisis. And therefore, G20, in all the summits, discusses not only financial issues, but how to fix these integrated uh, processes of crisis. And it has been very successful in dealing with financial crisis, fixing the financial architecture after the crisis. But now, there is a need in, in the sense of mission. G20 is, has a new mission to form an effective policy coordination platform. In the sense of the structure, structural aspect, G20 is maybe one of the most inclusive participatory process between advanced and emerging uh, countries, group of countries. Therefore, decisions, consultations made in G20 is much more comprising because representing two thirds of the world population and also a significant part of the 85% of world economy, a huge impact in that sense. Interestingly, also from the methodological perspective, G20 is original in the sense that it is not a very formal in, uh, organizational structure. Sometimes some people may say this is a disadvantage, but for us it is an advantage. Having a flexible, informal character, it is, it is much more effective because there, like in Brisbane when we met as 20 leaders, we didn't read uh, national statements, but it was very informal consultation and direct to the point uh, coordination of the issues. That's the advantage of G20. When we look at the global world economy today, it remains slow, the economic recovery, and uneven. And we are facing big problems, high un unemployment is continuing, and it is becoming a long-term structural problem, which may affect political stability and other social risks may emerge out of this. In 2015, we will have certain uncertainties, like normalization of monetary policy in the US. We all follow this very carefully. Deflationary pressures, particularly in Europe, and also the consequences of lower commodity prices, including oil prices. This, uh, these are some uncertainties maybe may emerge based on these new parameters. So we need to have a better coordination to face any challenge as the world leaders for not only for 2015, but for all uh, the, the next decades, even next century, will be shaped in coming years. Therefore, Turkey, Turkish priority as G20 presidency uh, had three dimensions, three principles, three criteria you can call inclusiveness, implementation, and investment. Inclusiveness is essential, as I said, not only for G20, um, in, in G20, but also for the world affairs. Two-thirds of the world's population, G20, and also 50% of the world's poor population. Now, one of the main target priority of Turkey will be how to make G20 process, meetings, decisions more inclusive, and how to have an access to non-G20 countries, group of countries, like LIDC. Turkey has been the coordinating country of least developed countries for 10 years, and 2016, we will be having a review conference. We want to have a strong LIDC's perspective into the different work streams of G20, so that G20 will not be seen like a, an, a, an elite of world economy, but it is very important for us to make G20's work next year as inclusive as possible, having access to LIDC, low-income developing countries especially. Therefore, we will make references to UN post-2015 development agenda, and we will make special effort for the basic necessities of LIDCs, like food security and nutrition framework. We will be the first presidency uh, to implement 
DG20 Food Security and Nutrition Framework, and we are planning to have a G20 Agricultural Ministerial Meeting to discuss especially how to limit, minimize waste and uh, waste of food, and how can we guarantee the basic needs of LDC, LIDC's uh, agricultural framework. Similarly, in domestic dimension, in every country as well as in the world, we are planning to have to bring the uh, inclusiveness to reduce the gap in participation rates between men and women in G20 countries by 25% by 2025. This gap is important. We want more women participation in all uh, fields of uh, economy as well as in daily life. This will bring, if we reach this target in 2025, bring more than 100 million women into the labor force and significantly contribute to our efforts to reduce unemployment and inequality. Inequality is important not only for between men and women, but in general for social co uh, cohesion, for social uh, peace, and for economic recovery. We will make special references to youth unemployment, which is a real risk for many countries. If young generation is unemployed, you can expect any type of tension, risks, and confrontational attitudes. Today, we, uh, we have to deal with the problem of 75 million unemployed youth around the world. And this employment, from this perspective, will be an, another uh, uh, priority area for us. One important issue which will bring to the agenda of international uh, economy and uh, global structure is integrating SMEs into the global value chain, small and medium enterprise. Small and medium enterprise is the best means to control unemployment and to have a much more redistributive, just uh, economic orders both nationwide and international-wise. Therefore, SME and LIDC will be a subject of, uh, of Turkish uh, meetings in, uh, throughout the year. Uh, in OECD uh, study, OECD study shows clearly inequality not only has a negative impact on economic growth, but also its causes social and political instability, as I said. The second principle priority will be implementation. G20, despite of the fact that it is an informal, flexible platform, many of the decisions being taken there is well implemented. The basis here is trust and confidence to the structures, to the platform. Even for domestic economic policies, the main reference point is trust and confidence. If you have political stability, trust and confidence, you can manage any economic crisis. Therefore, we will be looking and having follow-up mechanisms how to implement decisions being taken by G20. If fully implemented, G20 growth strategies agreed in Brisbane, all of us, will lift the G20's GDP by 2.1% by 2018. And if this is being achieved, there will be more than 2 trillion US dollars to be added to the global economy, and which will create millions of jo jobs, as well as which will raise non-G20 GDP by 0.5%. This is also essential for the spread of the wealth, and we will be offering a mechanism how to implement this principle to reach 2.1% uh, raise of uh, GDP in 2008. This additional growth is very needed because recent World Bank statistics and broadcastings uh, and forecasts says clearly that in 2015 and 2016, the growth rate will downgrade to 3% and 3.3%, which is very low compared to our targets. Third pillar will be investment, because investment is the basis, basic force for economic growth. It is estimated that 70 trillion US dollars need to be invested in global infrastructure over the next 15 years. For, to achieve this goal, for those countries with fiscal space, it could be possible to mobilize public resources to raise infrastructure investments without jeopardizing medium-term fiscal frameworks. As you know, there, are, there is around more than $7 trillion of government debt that is negative uh, yielding, and this is a big potential we can mobilize. Therefore, other than that, we will promote, we will propose that we have to find alternative channels of 
financing infrastructure investments like Islamic financing, like learning from each other, private, uh, public private partnership to increase the investment level. Here, three areas I want to mention regarding investment trade, energy, and climate. Trade is important to, for growth, and today G20 is representing 76% of world trade. We need to have an open and functioning multilateral trading system. This is very important. Bilateral, regional, plurilateral arrangements should be consistent to each other. I can give you one example directly related to Turkish economy. Now we are uh, uh, talk, uh, negotiating and talking with EU. I was in Brussels last week on TTIP. TTIP, if it is implemented only between EU and US, will be against Turkey-EU custom union agreement. The basis, we have a custom union agreement with EU, but EU wants to sign free trade agreement with third parties as well as uh, transatlantic trade and investment partnership with US, which is contradictory with Turkish custom union agreement between Turkey and EU. This consistency is very important to have an open and functioning multilateral trading system and WTO in that sense should be strengthened, should be given more one mandate to increase trade, global trade. Or energy, G20 countries are the basic consumers, producers, transit countries in energy, and therefore uh, energy, uh, what we endorsed in Brisbane, the G20 principles of, on energy collaboration will be followed. What we will be our objective? One is energy access in order to have more investment in energy and a much better framework of international energy policy. Energy access in sub-Saharan Africa, for example, more than 620 million people have no access to electricity in sub-Saharan Africa. This, is, this should be solved for the justice, just economic order, as well as for the new framework of energy policies. And energy, second area of in energy, energy investment, where the IEA estimates $66 trillion uh, is required for energy in, uh, needs and investments until 2040. Therefore, we are planning to organize, first time ever, an energy minister's meeting of G20 in 2015 to discuss all these issues. Of course, climate will be at the top of our agenda, especially regarding to the post-2020 climate change negotiation process. Turkey is fully committed to uh, negotiations under the UN framework, and we hope there will be a fair, flexible, and inclusive, legally binding agreement in Paris. There are certain hesitations to talk on climate in G20. We know this, but at the same time, we are sure that there is a need of a joint, strong message for the future of uh, our uh, planet. Lastly, I want to share one anecdote in order to explain how we approach to global economic crisis, global climate issues as well. A few years ago, three, four years ago, I was in a meeting on climate with uh, uh, foreign ministers in UN, in New York. There were several statements based on national positions. When it came to me, I tried to change the psychology, the atmosphere in the room, and I said, without reading my national statement, I said to my colleagues that in all other affairs, we can talk and act as ministers of foreign affairs of nation states. But if the agenda is climate, we shouldn't be talking and acting as foreign ministers of nation states, but we should talk and act as home ministers of humanity. Because if there is no ontological existence, there cannot be political or economic existence. Now, this year in G20, after such a global crisis, which affects all of us, I, I uh, will call all of the leaders of G20 all of us should act as, as if we are economy ministers of humanity, ja, not just uh, leaders of uh, nation states, but leaders in charge of economy, 
in charge of trade, in charge of uh, climate, of the humanity and of global community. If we have such a sense of responsibility, we can start a new phase and we can make a paradigm shift. But if we try to defend our national interest, rather than thinking and projecting for the future of humanity, that uh, platform will not be helpful and inclusive. I hope the Turkish presidency in G20 will bring new assets for the world economy and will help to resolve all the uh, pending issues, especially uh, economic growth and unemployment. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Prime Minister. Um, we have both spent a life, a long life, in academia, and we are not used to, uh, to being cut short or having uh, time limits. Uh, so, uh, but we, we have to live with the reality of the World Economic Forum, as you and I both know. So we have only 10, 12 minutes for uh, the remainder of this session, which is because the planes have arrived late. Um, so if you uh, will excuse me, I would like to ask you two specific questions. Uh, the first one is, what are the specific obstacles you foresee in the many objectives you have set for your, in your agenda? It's a rich agenda, and you have reflected very wisely on it. But there must be serious obstacles, specific obstacles, which you foresee. And could you elaborate on an example which will imply something important for all of us? Of course, G20 is an economic platform, but what I see as the main obstacle, I observe this in Brisbane as well, the geopolitical uh, structure and problems at this moment and different views of, the, of countries on different uh, crises is affecting uh, a better coordination on economics. Like crisis in Ukraine, President Poroshenko was here just before me. There is such a gap between leading powers which affect the psychology of the atmosphere. Or like Syria, of course, both Ukraine and Syria, they are our neighbors as Turkey. And there are many countries around us which is really uh, fragile or there are crises in these countries. When you live in such a con uh, framework, of course, economics is being affected by political uh, disputes. And uh, uh, the gap uh, be uh, between the members of G20 affecting uh, the uh, wise or uh, comprehensive analysis of economic situation, this is one of the main obstacles. General, we are all human beings. When 20 leaders sit around the table or in a room, Psychological atmosphere is very important. And if you have so many differences of opinion and many disappointments, like what we have as Turkey, because we have two million refugees and there is no international support, or there is no real uh, united position regarding Syrian crisis, which affect us. Similarly, all countries have differences, uh, may have differences, and this affects and This is the main obstacle in front of us. We should be acting in a very wise and rational manner. Rather than focusing on differences, it is now time to unite on what we agree, especially in economics. Economics, the main principle is rationality. If you act irrationally in economic uh, uh, life, that will have other uh, political consequences. This is the main obstacle. 2015, the, all these crises will be still in the agenda, and Turkey, as the center of all these political issues, will try to make some positive contributions to, the, uh, to, to resolve these issues, as well as not to make these political obstacles as a barrier in G20 agenda. But if I may follow up on that, uh, Prime Minister, uh, the world around you, the region around you, um, the neighborhood, has changed dramatically in the past few years. And so then the question is, given the fact that your role in that and your position in that neighborhood has also changed, there's of course the question whether you can play the bridging role, the unify, unifying role in the G20 which is required. Mm -hmm. You must have given that serious thought, of so course. I'd like to hear what that implies. 
Yeah, that's uh, important. Our position from uh, 1990s until now, but especially uh, in the last 12 years, Turkey has led all the process of mediation, conflict resolution. I have here my close friend, Vuk Yeremic, uh, when we established Turkey, Bosnia, Serbia trilateral process as two ministers, three ministers, uh, many uh, that it created a new atmosphere in Balkans. Similarly, we established high level strategic cooperation mechanisms with Ukraine, with Russia, conflicting countries, which ease detention and for us, economic interdependence is very important as a means of peacemaking. If economies are interdependent, it is less possible to have political crisis. Turkey, uh, with a strong democratic foundation, rise of economic growth, despite of all this crisis, our economy is the second biggest growing economy in Europe and third in OECD. And one of the, our uh, uh, per capita income has increased four times in the last 12 years. We are self-confident. Our system is functioning, democratic economic system. That is itself is uh, a positive uh, contribution to regional peace. But as the neighbor which uh, has been affected heavily by the crisis in Syria and Iraq, we have certain concerns we are always sharing with uh, our colleagues, with all of us, we, when leaders, when we sit, we don't talk only uh, economics, but also politics. And in this sense, Turkey, uh, as a non-sectarian, non-ethnic uh, policy uh, principle, can help to many of these issues. I can give you a list of mediation efforts we did, uh, but we don't have time. We can do similar efforts together, but important is we have to unite on the basic values of international system to act together on humanitarian tragedies like refugees and on all crimes against humanity, regardless, maybe terrorism, maybe other brutalities, we have to act uh, united. Thank you, Prime Minister. I'm afraid this brings this session to an end, given Thank the you. fact that there's another one. Uh, we hope to hear you again a year from now with yes. the results. Next year, we hope we can see the positive results of the Turkish G20 presidency. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.